Um, hey, uh, my name is Charlie Cheever, and I'm going to talk to you today about uh, this thing that I'm building with James E. Day called Exponent. Um, but before I get into that, um, I just thought I'd tell you how I ended up here. Um, about 10 years ago, I got a job at Facebook, um, and it was really fun. Uh, partly it was fun because I got to work on something that I used myself and my little sisters used, and they thought it was cool and stuff like that. Um, but even more important than that, uh, I felt like I could do a lot compared to the previous job I had. Um, I could just work really fast and get a lot of things done. And a couple of the things that went into that were that everything was written in PHP. It was one giant PHP code base. Um, and I didn't think that highly of PHP. I still don't, even though I guess it's getting better. But it's, it was good enough, and just the consistency was really great. And it meant that I could fix something on the profile page and then jump over and add a new feature to sign up that also had to touch the home page all in the same day without having to get permission from people or learning new things. Um, so that was, that was really huge for making things go fast. Um, and the other thing that was really good was just that it was a dynamic programming language where you, know, you could just use the same data structures for everything um, and move really quickly. So uh, that sort of development speed became sort of a core value of Facebook, and then the motto became move fast and break things, and then uh, something else after that that I don't know. Um, but then after I left Facebook, uh, I was working on a question and answer site called Quora that some of you might have seen in search results or something like that. Um, and the first thing that we did was we built a web framework that was live updating and component-based. Um, I could give a whole other separate talk about that, but it sort of think of it as like React, but on server rendered and touching your database. Um, so that, in the same way that React is, you know, made all of us much more fast and accurate web developers, um, this web framework helped us build that website really, really fast. Um, and then the other thing we did that was really, really important for development speed was we did uh, continuous deployment. Um, Probably a lot of you know what that is. If you don't, it means that basically every time you make a commit to master, you run all your tests, and if the tests pass, then you automatically just push to production. Um, the things that are great about that are that you're always only working on one version of the code. So all your energy goes into just making that master branch correct. Like, there's no fix a bug here, and then go make sure it's also fixed in the current release and back one release. Um, that doesn't seem like a big thing, but if you look at what's happened with like Python 2 and 3, and what was happening with like Node 10 and 12, splitting that energy across multiple releases actually just really, really slows you down. Um, another thing that's really good about that is that you just don't have to wait. Like, if there's some bug and you need to fix it, you, you fix it and it's, you commit it and then it's out there. Um, and so there were just all these things that, that added up about that that just made it a really, really important thing about going fast. Um, so just to review the things that, in my career, were good for moving faster, or one language for everything, dynamic programming language, uh, rapid and frequent deployment, easy to test and easy to try stuff out, and all your energy into one version of the code. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is mobile development. Um, the next thing we did at Quora was we realized everyone was getting iPhones and Android phones, and they were using them all the time. I was checking Twitter like 100,000 times a day, and people were telling me I was rude because of it. So we realized that mobile was the next big thing, and we had to build uh, an iPhone app. So I got one of our you know, hardest working, fastest, smartest engineers, and a designer who'd worked on Mac stuff before. And they started working on uh, an iPhone app. And about nine months later, we basically had a tab bar that wrapped our mobile website. Um, and people really liked it, though. And they started using it a lot. And uh, it became a big, significant chunk of the usage of the service. And so then the next thing we said was, well, we need to build an Android app now, too, because you know, half of the people have, in the world have Android phones. So I thought, well, that's great, though. We already have the design for this. We already tweaked the mobile website so it can sort of be stuck inside this frame, inside this hybrid app. Um, so this should go a lot faster. This should only take you know, a couple of weeks, probably. So I got somebody who'd worked on Java visualizations at Palantir and the same designer. And I said, you know, let's go to work on this. And then nine months later, we finally had an Android app that was like basically the same thing. Um, so basically, if you haven't done mobile development the traditional way, and you've just done web development, it's really hard for me to explain to you how terrible it is, and it's just the worst. So let's go through this list again of things that are good for moving faster. One language for everything. 
No, you're writing Objective-C on iPhone and you're writing Java on Android, and then you probably are doing something like embedding mobile web pages somewhere, and then you have to write those in your server-side language, it might be Python or Ruby or whatever, and then you're writing JavaScript in the browser there. Um, anyway, dynamic programming language, not really. Uh, Objective-C kind of, but in general, not the same as using Ruby or Python or PHP or, or Node.js or something like that that we're used to. Rapid and frequent deployment. Uh, if I had a stronger word than no, that would be what applies here. Like, because <laughs> you aren't even in control of your own process here. I mean, you're, you're waiting on other people to approve it and, and say what you've done is okay. Um, and then easy to test and easy to try stuff out. That's actually not as bad as the other things, but it's okay. And then um, all your energy into one version of the code. Uh, no, because you're split across iPhone and Android, and that just, yeah, that turns your teams that used to be a feature team where, where one or two or three people could, could design and implement one feature, now turns into, there's a product manager who makes a spec, and then, or a designer who makes a spec, and then an implementing team on one platform, an implementing team on another platform, and they feel disempowered, feedback loop gets longer, lots of things are bad. And then we have a bonus thing that I didn't even think of in advance, coming from the web because we had CSS my entire life, but there's no sane layout engine for the most part. You're doing a lot of arithmetic and manual computation of layouts. Um, if you've only done web development, you haven't done mobile development, this basically is the same as if, you, if every DOM element had to be positioned with position absolute in CSS. And so uh, it's hard to imagine that, but that's kind of what it's like. One second, we're trying to fix the projector stuff. Okay, cool. Um, so then if you've been paying attention in the React world, you've probably heard of React Native, which is this awesome thing that a bunch of people are working on to solve a lot of these problems. Um, so that's really great. So how many of you have heard of React Native? All right, pretty much everyone. Um, how many of you built stuff in React Native? Very few people. How many of you like the idea of building stuff in React Native, but just haven't had the time to, to set it up or everything up and haven't gotten it done? Okay, a lot more people. Okay, so that's what I'm working on with James, uh, a solution to all your problems. Um, <laughs> so we're calling it Exponent, and if you wanna start downloading it now, you can sort of try it during the talk. Um, just download the thing at that GitHub URL, and then on exponent.js.com, there's a link to the app. Uh, you don't have to do that, just if you wanted to. Um, but basically, so Exponent sort of, this is a super oversimplified graphic, but the idea is basically that we want Exponent to take care of everything below it in gray, React Native and all the native code stuff, like Xcode or Android Studio, Objective-C, Swift, provisioning profiles, development, deployment certificates, um, Java, that stuff. You don't have to worry about that anymore. All you have to do is use Exponent and then write JavaScript on top of it. Um, and so it's basically, there's three parts to Exponent. One is a standalone program that you run on your computer. Um, we call it XDE. Um, and we're just sort of releasing that today. Uh, the second part is an app you run on your phone. You can find it in the, the App Store on iPhone. It's just called Exponent. I think it's like the 12th search result because we just put it in the App Store. Um, but there's also a link to it on exponent.js, exponentjs.com. Um, we're gonna have an Android app as soon as React Native Android is ready, um, but it's not quite there yet. And then the third part is, it's a way to develop, collaborate on, and share experiences using just React Native JavaScript. Um, so let me, uh, how do I, okay. Um, I will show you. Um, so um, this is, what XDE looks like, if you can see that. Um, it's just sort of a GUI here. And what I, the, the easiest thing I can do is I can just click new project and then go somewhere like temp and make a new folder, hi React Rally, and then open that new folder. And it'll copy a bunch of files to create like a sample project. And then it'll start the React Native Packager um, and it'll start this thing called ngrok, which is basically turns your computer into a world accessible server. Um, and so then, now this is sort of ready to work with. So on, uh, on my phone over here, I've got the Exponent app already downloaded. So what I'm gonna do is hit send link right here, this button, 
and it'll actually send a link to view my experience uh, to the email address I've typed in here. You can put in an email address or a phone number, and it'll text it to you if you put in a phone number, or email you if you put in an email address. Um, so I'm gonna go over and show you my phone here. Oh, I just got a new email. Uh, and I'll open that, and I'll tap on this. And then it opens up the thing, I, the new project that I just created. Um, so the first time it takes a little while to download it from the packager, uh, but it's fast after that. Um, so in just a moment here, we'll basically see the new thing that we just made. Uh, there it is. Cool. So uh, you can see this is sort of slightly customized because we put in the name of the directory here, and then that becomes the title, Hi React Rally. Um, and the sample thing that we do is that we put in place just shows off some of the things that make uh, React Native like better than like a web page. So you can see this this sort of collapsing header here has a really nice frame rate and, and looks really good. And if you, like a lot of newspaper and magazine websites will have something similar that it goes about four frames per second and it's really annoying and makes it hard to read and it's janky. And then um, these touchable things, uh, it's hard to see my finger, but I can drag these around. When I tap on them, they change the header bar and um, slightly change. So this is just sort of a, a demo project that's sort of like hello world. We can also open um, existing projects and you can turn it, since it's all the same React Native JavaScript, you can turn most uh, React Native apps that people are working on into exponent projects just by doing a few small things. Um, so we basically uh, found this project on GitHub and uh, then uh, here's this thing that Brent Batney, who's the man and knows everything about React Native made, but it's like a Tinder swipe example. So. Uh, you can swipe the cards left and right. And um, the way that you do that is you just take, you have to basically do, oh, go to my slides. Uh, where did they go? Oh, um, you basically just have to add a package.json to point to your entry point. Um, if you use index.js, you don't have to do anything. Um, and then you change the line that says app registry register component my app to my app. You add another one where it says main points to my app because Exponent always looks for the main app. Um, so that's pretty much the only thing you have to do for most apps. Um, the, there are a few exceptions where things are different between sort of uh, vanilla React Native that you use Xcode to develop and developing an Exponent. Um, one thing is images. So uh, all your images have to be remote images. They have to be sort of served from URLs in the cloud. Because since there's no sort of Xcode type bundle that you're using here, there's no images embedded in the bundle. So everything has to be referenced uh, and from the cloud, sort of like a website. Um, another thing is fonts. If you want to use any custom fonts, those also have to be loaded from the cloud. So we wrote something called EX Font Loader that basically lets you load dynamically custom fonts into your projects if you want to. Because um, we found that was actually really important in some of the stuff we were working on. And then one, the biggest downside of using Exponent over uh, traditional React Native is that you, you don't have access to custom native modules if you need any of those. Um, a lot of things don't actually need those, and a lot of things that you think you do, you don't actually need to. Like a lot of the animation stuff uh, that people have done as a extension modules actually works better if you just write it with the animation library or things like that. Um, so, uh, there are a couple of use cases that people have been using this for. Um, one is sort of people who are contractors have been using this to sort of show work to their clients because it's a lot faster to just update stuff and send people a link and say, hey, I'm, I'm moving this over four pixels. Uh, is, that, is that in the right spot or do you want me to keep moving it over more? Or do you want me to make it bigger? Or are you happy with this? That's a lot faster to do than to put a new build in a test flight, for example. Um, another thing people are doing is just making really lightweight things that don't really make sense to put in the App Store. Um, like a really cool example is um, this thing that uh, Peter Rikartzik and Evan Johnson just made yesterday, uh, where they put the whole React Rally schedule into an exponent experience so that you can load it on your phone. Um, and they made this in about two hours, I think. 
and we're able to just publish it immediately to uh, Exponent. Um, so I just sort of gave away the cool thing I was going to show, but <laughs> uh, let's still, right now, uh, this is set up as a kind of, I, I mentioned how we, we sort of turn your computer into a world, world accessible web server. But if you know, most people work on laptops, what if you close your laptop and go away? What if you have to reboot your computer? What if you keep working on your code? There's all these reasons why you don't want people to actually have access to your live code. Um, and so you want to be able to publish stuff. So we built like a one-click publishing system in here. So all I have to do is put in my username and password, or I can actually even make up a new user, and if, as long as it's not taken, I can just sign up with the same form, and so I can say like, React Rally Talk is the new user, and I'll make the password, and create an account, and then I can publish that uh, example project that I was working on to here, and it'll sort of, uh, how do I scroll here? Uh, hmm. Let's try that again. Okay, there it goes. Um, so that's publishing, and then it'll give me a really clean URL that just is sort of like, exp.host slash your username slash the, the project name. Um, the URLs are always exp colon slash slash something. It's basically just HTTP, but we use the exp colon slash slash protocol um, basically because that way phones can recognize that they should open it in the exponent app. Um, and so uh, there are a bunch of pretty cool demos um, that uh, people have made so far. And we took like five of them that we liked and we just put them in the, at the top of the Exponent app. Um, so if you download the app, you can go check them out. So I showed you the, the Tinder app that Brent made. Um, there's this really cool thing that Leland Richardson made um, that uh, is like a photo scroller that uh, you know, zooms and has really nice physics to it. And then uh, just last night, uh, some random guy I used to work with found this and signed up and made some uh, gallery of cute animal photos. Um, and so the cool thing is just that instead of having to just make really, really serious big applications that you spend months and months and months on, you can make these really small experiences and then get them out to people really, really quickly. Um, and you can just do it only worrying about JavaScript instead of having to worry about everything else that goes along with traditional mobile app development. And so, um, those animals are really cute. So, <laughs> uh, that's basically all I have to show for you today. Um, most of this stuff is open source if you go to our GitHub um, and follow us on Twitter, exponent.js or JIRC Cheever. And we also have a Slack instance, so if you just join in there, we're always around, uh, excited to help people get set up. Um, Everything's sort of beta, so if you find bugs, please report them and we'll fix them really quickly. And uh, in the break after this, feel free to come up to talk to me or James and we'll help you. And Brent Vatney, who also knows everything about this and React Native has been helping us also offer to help people get set up on this. Um, so, cool, thanks for your time.